welcome to another session of software design in this session we'll discuss the way to model lists so in python programming or in other programming you might have discussed lists so let's see if you want to have a group of elements or list how we can demonstrate it with flowcharts so lecture overview we'll have an introduction to lists or arrays and next we'll look at flowchart representation of lists so we'll be considering arrays for this and next the pseudocode representation of lists so we'll be discussing about lists so let's say so first we look at a program where we need to have lists so this example design a program that will prompt for and receive 10 examination marks for a mathematics test and compute the class average and display all the marks and the class average to the screen so we'll be receiving 10 examination marks so where do we save this 10 examination marks so with that approach we will go to the next slide and see how we can use lists so lists it's a series or list of variables in computer memory so this is the definition or the theory of lists so when you say list so it's like a collection it's like a group in previous example we had several numbers so several examination marks so you had this uh, you want to store all those examination marks so you use a list for that for manipulation like list series or list of variables in computer computer memory so in computer memory you have a when you have it's a series of variables so usually you store one data value in one variable so list you can store many numbers or many items so that means it should have list of variables in computer memory but there's something important here all variables share the same name although list is a list has a series or list of variables in computer memory but all those variable names all those variables share the same name so each variable has a different index so let's try with a practical example and also before that we'll look at what is index so index is a position number of an item in a list so indexes are always a sequence of integers so arrays first position one value second position another value. so let's go for an example here it is clear from the example so how list occupy computer memory so with this example we can apply the theory and we can see we can get a clear understanding from this slide each item has the same name now you can see if the computer memory is depicted here in this rectangle we have small small boxes so here we are trying to demonstrate a list so you can see we have few variables 25 36 and 47 which is saved in the memory it is saved in continuous locations in the memory so we have that list of variables in computer memory and the second property is all variables share the same name and each variable has a different index so we have all those properties here all the variables share the same name for example here the na variable name is sum wells all those variables 25 36 and 47 they have the same name called somevals somevals but so how do we distinguish how we can say okay if you want to access 25 how we can access if i want to access 36 how we can access 
If I want to access 47, how we can access or retrieve that number? For that, we use indexes. Although we have the same variable name, we have different indexes. That means 0, 1, 2. So if we have some wells within square bracket 0, that means it refers to this place. So it has the value 25. Some wells 1 within brackets 1, that means 36. Some wells 2, that means 47. So we can see each item has same name, variable name. But each has a different index. So element is an item in the list. So 25 is one element which is an item in the list. 36 is an element. 47 is an element. All those elements together forms a list. So element is, the definition is an item in the list. So list elements are in, located in continuous places in the memory. You can see next to 25 you have 36, next to that you have 47. So size of the list, that means the number of elements it will hold. So the variable name for the list is some wells, S-O-M-E-V-A-L-S, and the size of the list is how many now elements in that list so that means element number one is 25 element number two is 36 element number three is 47 it has three elements so if you go to the previous slide list is a series or list of variables in computer memory yes we looked at this example it's true List is a series or list of variables in computer memory. Next point is all variables share the same name. Yes, true. We saw that all variables have the name some wells. S-O-M-E-V-A-L-S. And third one is each, each variable has a different index. We notice the index of first element is 0. Index of next element is 1. Index of next element is 2 each variable has a different index so index or superscript or subscript let's see what is an index so index is the position number of an item in the list index is the position number so you can see index is the position number so first position we all know that in array indexes we start from zero so the first in first position will be zero Index is the position number of an item in the list. First position is 0, second position is 1, third position is 2. So we have indexes like that. First position index is 0, second position index is 1, third position index is 2 because the indexing starts from 0. So indexes are always sequence of integers. So the structures used an array to store XI marks so we for, it, for a, the previous example that we are doing so now let's try to implement this example or the software design for this example so let's try to do the software design for that example so you can have some time and try your own and next let's see how we can get it so our problem is design a program that will prompt for and receive 10 examination marks from a mathematics test and compute the class average and display all the marks and the class average to the screen. So let's try to apply the knowledge or the concepts that we learned from lists and how to model the list with indexes and so on. So an array to store exam marks, you need a variable called marks. An index to identify the elements. Let's say we have marks of 10 students. We all store them in the variable called marks or a list or an array. But in order to identify, let's say Steve has 
90 marks. Robert has 10 marks. We have saved all those in the variable called marks. We have all the marks, but we need to identify first index mark, second index mark, just like the previous example. We have to see each element. For that, we need indexing. So we first of all we have an array to store XI marks, the variable will be marks, and next we have an index. So we know why we are using an index in order to identify the element we have an index. A do while loop to accept scores, another do while loop to display the scores. So while loops and in programming or the design we have sequence, selection, and repetition. In our previous lectures, we had a separate lecture on sequence and also selection and also repetition sequence is set of instructions to one after the other selection is decision making repetition or iteration is you have a set of instructions repeatedly executing until a particular condition is met so we should have a do i loop to accept the scores next we do the necessary processing and another do i loop to display the scores so now we can go and implement in have our flowchart. So the symbols are same. We have a separate lecture about the symbols. You can refer that in case if you want to refresh your knowledge. So first we have the start symbol. Next we have processing. We set the index i, comma total class average to zero. So we should have variables index i total class average these are the variables that we will be using in our program so we assign them to zero initialize next we have to have 10 marks that means we have to have a while loop so we we have to spot the difference between our other previous flowcharts versus this flowchart because we have to have 10 marks and also we are iterating through the list we should have this I variable indexing because we have to store it in each element of an array and also we have to retrieve from each element so remember we have to act store these values let's say we first we have to store this 25 for that we have to access the particular index to store this 36 we have to access the particular index to store this 77 we have to access the particular index just like that we when we want to display also we have to have the particular index so we have to iterate through the particular index so we have to iterate one after the other so that's why we are having a loop to iterate from one variable element to the other so first we prompt for marks so marks is our variable so for the position zero the first mark is you know we first we have to when we have 10 marks, we have to accept the first mark. So first mark is saved in the first position of the array. So our first position is 0. So we will be maintaining the count here available here i. So i is initially set to 0. So 0th index is the first position. So we have initialized array index i to 0. i is initialized to 0 in this section which is shown from the mouse pointer set index i so i is set to 0 after we start the flowchart next we have the decision making while i is less than 10 it goes to the prompt so that means input from the user so you get marks you prompt for marks i that means the first mark which is uh, array index 0 and you get marks for position 1 mark which is assigned to mark 0 then you add marks to the total let's say if you add 10 if you add 10 to the total that means first the total is 0 0 plus 10 is 10 so now the total is 10 and next here you have a processing step you increase the index by 1 so that means in our first position we have saved 
the first value in order to go to the next position as highlighted in the from the shown from the mouse pointer in order to go to the next pointer what you have to do is you have to increase the index first index is 0 next index is 1 so here what we do is in our previous iteration the index was 0 so now we have 0 plus 1 and if you follow track through the mouse pointer you can see it goes again back to here 1 is less than 10 true it comes back here in the next iteration it gets the mark for i now the i is 1 so marks i so the marks 1 so that means the second position mark 0 is the first position marks 1 is the second position for the second position also we get the marks and we add the marks to the previous total let's say we got 30 so our previous total was 10 now 10 plus 30 40 again we increment the i then again it goes back here it is less than 10 you add the mark so now the i is 2 2 is less than 10 now we add the mark so marks 2 marks 2 position is you are getting the third mark that means mark 0 just to look at this example if you replace the sum wells variable with marks you will get a better understanding 0 you added a mark next 1 you added a mark next 2 you added a mark so index is 0 1 2 so position 1 index 0 so first mark index 0 second mark index 1 third mark index 2 just like that you increase the index and it get the mark so once everything is done when you have 10 that means 10 is less than 10 becomes false that means we have already added 10 marks it comes to the class average then we calculate the class average and again we have to do the iteration part again to print or to display the marks so for example if we have three marks in order to add the marks you will have to have a do while loop you first add to 25 then you in increase the index by 1 it goes to 0 to 1 and then you add 36 the index goes 1 to 0 by i equals i plus 1 then you add 47 so just like that you have to iterate through the index to store the same process you have to do to display first you display 25 then you iterate through the index to display the value so that is highlighted here while i is less than 10 you display marks i again i equals i plus 1 so this i variable plays an important role when you have lists for example maybe for an assignment you might have to uh, deal with the marks of lot of students for that you have to be very careful because you are losing when you are using a list you always have to use a variable to iterate so just like i the index to iterate through the list to retrieve marks and also to display the mark so finally you display the class average and you stop so that's the end of this session about this is the way we model lists or arrays thank you very much